Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hey, I'm Alice, and this is Nature News. We've got a lot of exciting news for you this week, so stay tuned. Here in the United States, it's Thanksgiving week. So before we get into the news, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you that has been watching and supporting this weekly news show for the last few months. It's through education and compassion that we can all make this planet a better and more biodiverse place. And if we continue to work together and learn, we can make sure that we and our future generations have clean water, clean air, and wild places to enjoy. If you agree with that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below on what you're thankful for this week. Now, speaking of biodiversity, scientists actually just discovered a new endangered primate in Myanmar, but the sad thing is there's only 260 of these left. The Popo langurs were likely once widespread across central Myanmar. And according to this study, it analyzed historical records like museum specimens and travel notes from the turn of the century. They believe that there's only a few groups remaining in this area. And these remaining individuals live in four isolated populations. The largest population is in Mount Popa, home to more than 100 langurs. Now, Mount Popa is a sacred pilgrimage site and an important wildlife sanctuary. But unfortunately, threats remain here from illegal hunting and deforestation for the timber and fuelwood industry. Hopefully, the acknowledgement of the species will keep it protected. Over in Africa, the president of Gabon, His Excellency El Hajj Omar Bongo, has confirmed the creation of 13 new national parks. Now, these are going to cover three million hectares that represent 10% of the country's surface area. And this is fantastic news for the amazing wildlife like forest elephants, buffalo, chimpanzees, and gorillas that live within the country. And in Rwanda, they are planning to plant 8 million trees to combat climate change and bring back forests. Now, Rwandan officials say the reforestation will help more than 360,000 people directly, most of those people being women. They further said that it will restore green cover in at least 263,000 hectares of land and also help in the refurbishment of another 200 plus thousand hectares of land that's meant for agriculture. Now, meanwhile, back in the United States, the Trump administration is asking oil and gas firms to pick spots where they want to drill in the Alaska Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Now, it's racing to open the pristine wilderness to development and lock in those drilling rights before President-elect Joe Biden takes office. The call for nominations was published this past Tuesday in the Federal Register, which allows companies to identify tracks on which to bid during an upcoming lease sale on the refuge's nearly 1.6 million acre coastal plain, a sale that the Interior Department aims to hold before Biden takes the oath of office in January which would make it very hard for him to go back and change any of this. Now, a leasing auction just closed in the Gulf of Mexico for similar oil and gas leases, and this move would be a capstone of President Trump's efforts to open up public lands to logging, mining, and grazing, which President-elect Joe Biden strongly opposes. The Bureau of Land Management will hold a 30-day comment period starting this week, but once that period closes, the agency could publish a lease sale notice which must be published 30 days before an auction takes place. Now, under that timeline, drilling rights could be sold before January 20th, Inauguration Day. We do, however, have a rewilding win here in the United States. 100 Plains Bison found a new home this week. They trampled onto the Wallacotta Buffalo Range on the land of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. Now, these 100 buffalo are the first of as many as 1,500 animals that are going to be setting foot on the 28,000 acres of native grassland, the beginnings of what will become North America's largest native-owned and managed bison herd. Now, if you've seen a bison in the wild, drop a comment down below. I saw my first one ever in Yellowstone when I was a little kid, and I'll be heading back there in a few weeks, too. In the Netherlands, a brewery is running its establishment by burning iron. This is a clean and recyclable fuel. Now, this is a surprising green fuel alternative that is starting to grow in popularity that burns metal powders. So the iron is actually ground very fine, it's inexpensive, and it burns readily at high temperatures. 
And get this, it releases energy as it oxidizes in a process that emits no carbon and produces easily collectible rust or iron oxide as its only emission. Now that rust can be regenerated straight back into iron powder and with the application of electricity. And if you do this using solar, wind, or other zero carbon power generation systems, you actually end up with a totally carbon free cycle. Now the iron acts as a kind of clean battery for combustion processes, charging up via one of a number of means, including electrolysis and discharging in flames and heat. Recently, Swinkle's family brewers in the Netherlands has become the first business to actually implement this in an industrial process. And I'm really excited to see where things go from here. Now this company has been working with the Metal Power Consortium and researchers at TU Eidhoven to install a cyclical iron fuel system at its brewery Bavaria that's actually capable of providing all the heat necessary for some 15 million glasses of beer a year. Now the ambition of this technology is to convert the first coal-fired power plants into sustainable iron fuel plants by 2030. And if this happens, this could be really great for all of the communities that had coal-fired power plants. Now you may have heard of the term fast fashion, but what about fast tech? Electronics are being constantly updated with the newest models, new phones, new TVs, new computers, you name it. And recycling of the old equipment is never an easy feat. So the European Union actually just called on the Internal Market Committee to propose electronics be made with the options to be repaired. Now in a poll, 79% of consumers said they, they would like the option to repair products rather than buying a new one. Yeah, I would too. Now this would support a secondhand goods market, promote more sustainable production practices, and reduce electronic waste. In the last few weeks, California actually announced that they would ban the sale of gas and diesel powered cars by the year 2035. And the UK actually jumped on that bandwagon this week as well, with Boris Johnson making an announcement that by 2030, they were going to go gas and diesel free. Now this is gonna be a huge shift because currently about 73% of new vehicles sold are gas and diesel, just 5% are electric and the other amount is hybrid in there. So there's a big shift that needs to happen and now they're giving them a pretty tight window to make that happen. I'm really interested to see how many other countries hop on board with this same kind of mentality of getting rid of gas and diesel vehicles. So that's gonna be something interesting to keep an eye on. And I'm actually gonna be putting out a brand new video in just a couple weeks, reviewing some of the best electric trucks and SUVs out there for all of you truck lovers like me that are gonna to wanna to go electric and don't really know what's out there. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to drop your comments, your questions and your nature news in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you guys next week. As always, I'm right here on YouTube every Sunday with a new video at 10 a.m. Pacific time, followed by a live chat too.